Hey church, my name is Charlie. I'm a pastor on staff. And currently myself and some of the video team are here in Los Angeles, the land that is full of social media personalities and influencers, because we're here to interview one of my favorite influencers. You heard it said that life is like a box of chocolate, but I like to say life is fun. So today I'm gonna go find someone on the street that's down and out, and I'm gonna show them, and we love them! His name is Jimmy Darts. He's 27 years old, he loves Jesus. He's amassed a following of over 23 million people across all platforms. You amazing people have donated over $6,000 for him to help him get off the streets. He makes videos of random acts of kindness and radical generosity. We hope you enjoy this conversation. So going back to like the start, when you first started making these videos, was there any part of you that was like, dang, this is a lot of money, this kind of hurts, yeah. <laughs> giving up 500 bucks, like was there yeah. any any of that in you? And I, uh, before I started doing this content, my, my friend, he said, Jimmy, you gotta be Santa Claus in private before you're Santa Claus in public. And so I took him literal, bro, and I bought a Santa suit. Merry Christmas. Uh, a lot of days I dress up like Santa and go around town kicking it with homeless people. It wasn't even near Christmas, like middle of July, you know, and just loving on people. And so I've been doing this stuff, you know, since I was a little kid. My, when I was yeah. a kid, my parents would give us $200 for Christmas, $100 to keep for something we wanted, and $100 we had to give to a stranger. And so right then, I just got comfortable interacting with people, giving to people all this. And you really see that, man, when you're generous, God will take care of you. You're amazing. Oh, how's that? God only made one of you. What are you up to? Well, Rainbow. right now, I'm, a, I'm, call, I'm called a homeless vet and trying to, trying to get back over to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma with my son. I'm trying to go to the grocery store, actually. You, just, you don't have like a dollar. I have some a quarter. quarter. Really? That would work. Well, it, it would I help mean, towards what I'm trying to get. I got more than that. I got 50. What's your name? Roy. Roy, good to meet you, Roy. Good to meet you. I'm Jimmy. Jimmy? Good to meet you, Roy. Are you homeless too, or? Uh, no, Roy, here, actually, take this. No, I don't, I don't need it. Here, I want Why? you to take this. Why? I got $500 for you. You? Yes. Why? Because I'm rewarding your kindness. You're amazing. Before you often bless people in your videos, you'll first test their generosity. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you get the idea for that? What made you think, like, this is the way I want to go about it? Like, first, testing them before you bless them. I just, uh, I remember, you know, God saying, hey, Jimmy, because uh, I, I said, I want to make videos, you know, like helping people, giving away money, changing lives. And I said, how can I do this, God, without making it like about me, you know, yeah, where it's yeah. like, hey, I'm Jimmy, what's up? We're giving away, like, how can I make it different than that? And he's like, the kindness challenge, like go up to people, ask them for help, and if they help you, then change their life. When people are generous and they pass these kindness tests, they're really ready for a blessing. You know, when someone does something, it reveals a lot about their heart, you know, um, well, for good things and for bad things, you know? And so when somebody's generous, it shows a lot of what's going on inside and it shows that they're ready to handle blessing because when we hold on to money or anything like this, one, we're greedy and we're not letting it go. And two, you know, if you tried putting a dollar in my hand right now, it just roll right off. And so God can't wow. bless us when we're not generous. And when we're generous, we can give and we can receive. And when these people give, I go, wow, they're a giving generous person. They're going to be able to steward not 100% all the time, but for the most part, they're going to be able to handle a blessing that comes. Yeah. You know, what a visual. If you try to put a dollar in my hand like this, it would roll right off. Yeah. I love that, bro. Yeah. That's really, really good. Yeah. We set, we set the own cap in our own lives, you know, like, yeah. like however generous we are, however radical we are for God, however much we love him, like that's just how much he can do more things in our life, you know, yeah. like. He's, he's, it's not like we're trying to convince him to do something, but he's just looking for, man, just humility, obedience, generosity, and all these things, and then he can do so many things in our life, you know? Hey, Herbie, man, I was gonna go get something to eat. I don't have my wallet. Could you grab me just one taco? Is that all? Is that no, cool? wait. Could you just get one taco, man? I'm just hungry. I'll get you. I just, really? Tacos. Yeah, thank you so much, bro. For sure. Man, why did you, why did you help me? the right thing to do. I actually did have my wallet today. I got five hundred dollars for you man for being so kind to get me a meal. For real? Yes, because you stepped out and were kind man. Ah, so okay. you were being generous at times when 
to an outsider's perspective, it did not make sense for you to be generous. So maybe speak for a moment to those who feel like I'm not in the position right now to exercise generosity. What would you say to that person? Yeah, man, I would just say that, you know, you want to listen to pops and do what God's telling you, you know? And when God talks about generosity and even tithing and things like that, like if you, if you, if you know who God is and you know his nature, you have a relationship with him, you know he's amazing. And yeah. you know he's not trying to screw you over. You know he's incredible. And so anything he recommends you to do, like do that ASAP because it's not going to crush your life. Mm. It's actually going to empower it. I think that, yeah, be generous. Um, you know, if you're making a dollar a month, give 10 cents away you know yeah. to to the church or to someone to bless someone because when you when you honor god with those first fruits it's so powerful what he'll do he'll bless the rest of it you know yeah. man everyone can be generous and and uh yeah just see what it does in your life it'll it'll be incredible and you'll feel amazing and it's something you're called to do yeah. you know it's it's not really optional as a christian like it's and it's not like oh we're doing it to get saved obviously we're it's not by works but man, you know, if, if you're on a football team, you're gonna be working out, you know? So it's yeah. like, if you're in the kingdom, you're gonna be living generous, you're gonna be forgiving people, you're gonna be sharing the gospel. Like, these are just basic principles yeah. of Christianity, you know? For sure. I, I read a, a quote from you that said, you'll never go broke by giving. And I would love for you just to, to explain that statement. You'll never go broke by giving. Yeah. It's actually hilarious and people always give me credit for that quote, but it was actually uh, one of my followers every day he'd donate like five, ten dollars and he'd say, you can't go broke by giving, you can't go broke. So I just said it and people like think it's my quote, but yeah, it's this awesome guy that just was always donating and said, you can't go broke by giving, but there's so much truth to that statement, man. Like first off, you're going to be blessed enormously internally. Mm. And then second off, you know, whether you're a Christian or wherever you believe, whatever, that's just an actual principle that is honored in the world and God honors. Like, like you could have the worst heart ever and generosity will unlock a lot of things in your life. For sure. But yeah, man, being generous, I've just never seen it backfire, you know? Like, yeah, yeah it's not like you're giving away $10 and all of a sudden two months later, you're like, oh my gosh, God paid my rent. Like, I, I just know in farming or whatever, it's like you plant something and then like a year later it grows and then that's when you get it. It's, you know, so, so many people be like, well, I don't, you know, I, I gave a hundred dollars or was tithing and uh, two months ago and now, you know, it's like, well, yeah, give that puppy a year to be planted, you know, give that sucker some time. And, uh, and just watch, you know? And if you don't see the reward of your generosity in this life, in eternity, you're gonna see what it did. Is there anything left on your bucket list? Yeah, I'd like to uh, hot air balloon. I could take you a uh, hot air balloon in the morning. What? At 5.30. Huh? I know you don't do what you do for this reason, but I wonder just how has blessing others blessed you? Yeah, man, I mean, it's just it's the funnest thing in the world, you know, waking up every day and seeing someone's actual life changed. I mean, yeah. you can't you can't make it up and just it's just it's just been incredible, man. The people I've met, the experiences I've had and just being able to be the instrument for redemption in people's lives. The hands know? and feet, bro. And so, yeah, man, that, that's what I love. Like one of the coolest things ever, man, was I remember I was in Anaheim and I see this guy, this, he's a homeless veteran and he's on heroin and he's like almost passed out on the side of the street. And I'm like, man, there's nothing I can really do for this guy. Like you would need a whole like, you know, like, uh, I don't know, he'd have to go into like some treatment center and all this to get his life turned. Like, I can't just do that. And then God, I was like, what should I do? And he's like, bring him some fun. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, don't give this guy like money right now. Like ask him what's on his bucket list. Yeah. And so I'm like, uh, Steve, his name was, I said, Steve, what's on your bucket list, brother? And he goes, bucket list, bucket list. He goes, I, I want a hot air balloon. I want to skydive and I want to go deep sea fishing. And I never met this guy, just within a one minute, I say, all right, I'll be back in an hour to pick you up. And he thought I was joking. I came back in my little Honda, picked him up. We drove to a hotel, spent the night. Next morning, we were up in a hot air balloon. A couple days later, he jumped out of a plane. This guy's like 65 years old. That's and uh, he said it was the fondest memories of his life. And the best memories of his life was the, the, that week we were doing stuff. 
and he ended up like getting off of drugs and he just reminded him how fun life could be. Because when someone's kicked, kicked, kicked and they're on the ground and they're lonely and dark, man, it's just a scary place. And you know, sometimes just having a friend and someone to help you out can change everything. To end this conversation, we're just curious. Yeah. Is there any one story or moment where you've blessed somebody that's your favorite? Yeah, my favorite one ever was uh, was Jose. I was uh, I, I woke up that morning, was praying, and I said, God, what kind of video should we do today? And he said, Jimmy, go around and ask someone for a hug. And I was like, that's the most simple thing ever. But it's not always about the craziest idea. It's if there's glory on it. Mm. And so I was like, all right, I'm asking someone for a hug. So I drive around town all day for hours, and I'm about to go up to people asking for a hug, and I just feel no peace and no presence on it. And so I'm like, go out to the fifth person, and I'm just like, feel the Holy Spirit saying no. I'm like, what in the world? So what do you mean? You want me to hug myself, you know? And uh, he's like, no, be patient. And so I'm like, all right, well, the sun's setting. It's time to, you know, end the day. So I'm driving home thinking, well, I just walked around in circles all day, nothing happened. And I'm walking around, or I'm driving back home, and I see this guy on a bike on the side of the road, just biking. And I could tell he was just got done painting. His clothes were all dirty and stuff. And I, I just knew that is the guy. So I whipped the car over, sprint over, and then walk slowly so he thinks I'm coming around the corner. And I said, man, sorry to bother you, man. Could I get a hug? I had a long day. I haven't seen family in a while. I just need a hug, man. He stops his bike with his feet because the brakes don't even work. Gives me a hug. I said, man, what's your name, Jose? Jose, I want to give you 500 bucks for being so awesome giving me hugs. He just loves you. <laughs> God's got you, bro. He's got you, man. It's a miracle for me, man. What's that? It's a miracle for me. It's a miracle. This grown man just breaks down in tears, starts weeping, and he goes, today at work, the boss paid everybody except for me. And he's been getting taken advantage of because he was a, like a legal immigrant from El Salvador. And so, you know, like people can manipulate him, do whatever, and he can't take him to court or nothing. So it was so sad. And I was like, what's your story, man? And he goes, yeah, I, I moved here 18 years ago to provide for my family in El Salvador, to send them money to take care of them because the economy is so bad for them to survive. And so he goes, yeah, I haven't seen my wife and kids in 18 years, just on FaceTime. And I work and send them money. And I told my wife, I'm gonna be home this Christmas. And she goes, you can't come home. What are you crazy? You never saved the money. You never made it. Like the whole point was to go to us provide. If you come back now, we'll be the same place. And he goes, no, God's going to do something. And then he runs into me and I give him, give him a hug, all this stuff. I become best friends with this guy. We went around the country, blessing people, hit like three, four states doing stuff, staying in hotel rooms together. This guy became like my hilarious grandpa. And I end up raising around 50 grand for this guy. Wow. He ends up moving home to El Salvador in time for Christmas, hugs his wife at the airport. And he said a house there's like 10 grand. So he's got enough for like five houses. He's starting his own business and his life is off to the races. And what unlocked that for him, I believe, is one, his faith of saying, I'm coming back for Christmas. God's going to do something. And two, him choosing to forgive. Yeah. That's the most rewarding thing for me, man, is just, it's just unbelievable, like just getting to just meet these awesome people that yeah. we're gonna be spending in eternity with forever, yeah. you know? So, so that, that's, that's priceless.